So we're sitting at our Aussie Modern today and we wanted to cover the second portion of what takes place after stem walls are stripped. So in previous videos, which you go back and check out, we've covered ultimately what happens between the footing pour, the stem wall prep, and then the stem wall pour and how all those pieces and components are, be able, are tied in together. But today we want to talk about the pieces of the puzzle that go between stem wall and slab work. So immediately after we strip forms, our sites become a dirt disaster. And this is due to the excavation that takes place for our underground plumbing details. So as you can see, there's a lot of varied topography that happens as our plumbing excavation team is getting ready to be able to place the pipes in the appropriate location for underground drainage. So as we enter in a lot, the first thing you'll notice <clears throat> is our water supply line. And typically since we're building infill development, we're gonna be connecting to an existing tap. And in this case, the tap actually runs directly underneath the driveway. And so we've actually sleeved it appropriately so that if this ever needs to be addressed in the future, that we can easily be able to fix the problem without pulling up any of the hardscape. And in this case, since it'd be a placed concrete driveway, we would have difficulty and a huge cost on our hands if we didn't take this extra precaution to ensure that not only we can be able to resolve any issues, but that the homeowner in the future will be able to resolve any issues with this beautiful custom home. So as we shifted to a more modern design palette, Design Tank, which is our architect of record, has done a phenomenal job encompassing the overall vision that we've had for this Aussie Modern. One of the things that sets them apart is providing a slab plan detail that actually indicates where all of our underground plumbing lines need to be associated as they relate to the finished fixtures, such as tubs, sinks, toilets, and other wash basins throughout the house. This is imperative because at this stage in the game, we ha don't have any framing members, we don't have any walls. The only thing that we're able to measure with is the exterior of the stem wall. And so these measurements become a critical component to allow things to run smoothly out here on site with our plumbing team. Now, one of the things that we referenced in the previous videos was the importance of box outs through the concrete footings. And I'll show another video on how exactly this takes place. But in this particular detail, as mentioned, we have a structural load that runs along this interior footing. But we have a ton of plumbing that's located in the front of the house. And in this particular location, our sewer tap is located at the back of the property. So we need to be able to maintain a quarter inch drop as we run through the east side of the property and be able to connect all of our west side plumbing locations, which would include our water heater, additional washer and dryer, kitchen space, and powder room. And we need to be able to make sure that everything from the west side of the property flows underneath this interior footing. And so ultimately, if you look down here, we actually created a box out in the footing detail that allowed us to be able to run our, our plumbing appropriately through the space. So the first location, we were actually able to go completely underneath the interior footing. But in this location, we had to box out this interior footing. And as you can see, the rebar is currently exposed within this small 18 inch gap. And this was planned ahead of time to be able to connect our butler's pantry, our powder room, and our water heater to pass through this portion of the footing without actually having to chip out concrete and potentially even cut some of the rebar, which would have a detrimental effect on the overall integrity of this specific footing and bearing point. By doing this, it allows for our plumber to easily move throughout his day to be able to accomplish the task at hand, which in a house this size is usually about three days for them to get to a point where we can be able to have inspection. When discussing underground plumbing with our trade partners, we're obviously gonna to try to minimize the overall amount of runs that's necessary, which is specifically the reason that we deal with our box outs. And as you can see here, we're able to create more than enough slope as mentioned, minimum is a quarter inch, but it'd be a lot better if we're able to get closer to a half inch to be able to ensure that all waste from the property exits to the exterior sewer tap that's located behind me. So as we start to exit the property and we've collected all the plumbing and we've been able to collect all the drainage lines, we're able to slope at a more aggressive rate to be able to exit underneath the exterior footing of our home and into the backyard space as we travel to the plumbing tap located behind us. Let's go take a peek. 
So as you can see, I'm sitting in the main location where we're tying back into the city tap. We're currently at about five, five and a half feet depth for this specific lot. And that's gonna range typically from about four and a half feet to maybe eight and a half feet, depending on where we're tying in to the city, the city sewer system that's located in this place, running down between the adjacent properties located on this block here on Monterosa. What I've always find interesting is that even new code doesn't bring any of the city taps up to current standard. So we're still utilizing a six inch clay pipe for any new taps that would be associated with any permit or new build that takes place here in Phoenix. And so we're able to connect our four inch ABS with a rubberized sleeve that allows us to be able to get all the ways to exit the property appropriately and ensure that no backups in this system will be unlikely for years to come. I'd like to point out a few additional features that are required by city code that allow us to be able to ensure that our lines will be able to be cleaned and run properly regardless of any large clogs that might happen in the future due to kids throwing stuff down the drain or in other unforeseen circumstances. So one of the ways that we're able to ensure that clogs don't occur, or at least they can be addressed appropriately when they do, is by putting a bullhorn within 50 feet of any of the plumbing fixtures. Now this is in addition to some of the additional cleanouts that are located at each plumbing fixture throughout the home. And what this bullhorn does, it allows you to be able to sweep appropriately to the rear of the property to be able to take care of any clogs easily as located outside the cavity of the home. And it also allows you to be able to address any clogs inside the home by utilizing the outside clean out that'll lead us directly in to the main living spaces of the home as it relates to underground plumbing. It really is amazing to me how much you get out of a new home when it relates to new standards and new building codes. People have been building for centuries and a lot of the specific building codes allow us to be able to avoid some of the problems that have plagued a lot of the homes in this area that were built in the 50s. This is one of the critical benefits when building a new property or buying a new residence is understanding that simply put, you're getting a better product that's gonna stand the test of time. So to a lot of people, this might just look like randomly placed black ABS, but there's a lot of nuances that are required during this stage of construction. And so as we go through some of these details, I'd like to discuss the differences between each of the piping components that we have here now. So all the exterior wrap pipe is going to be for our vent stacks, and it's going to allow for us to be able to pour concrete appropriately and still have a little bit of play to be able to deal with any adjustments that might have to take place after completion. It also protects our pipe during our concrete pour to ensure that no cracks take place and we're allowed to be able to expand and contract around that pipe to ensure that all of the off-gassing that would take place within the sewer system is appropriately vented outside the envelope of the home, whether that be a roof penetration or a wall penetration. So as seen, we have multiple vent stacks located in this primary bathroom. This vent stack is gonna to go to the toilet closet as well as associated to our tub drain for our freestanding tub. We then have a, a large linear drain that'll be running the distance of our shower basin here, which will essentially have two drain points as well as two vent stacks for the amount of fixtures that we're gonna be completing in this bathroom, which include a rain head, two fixtures and a handheld. And then we have our double sink basin that'll reside on this wall, requiring another vent stack to come out through a roof penetration. One of the things that you'll notice is that half of them are wrapped, which are all vent stacks, and half of them are not. And the ones that aren't are two inch ABS for drainage. And once we get to a point where we're able to do our AB compaction, we end up boxing this whole area out with a 12 by 12 cardboard box and AB that will allow us to be able to adjust our drain accordingly to the specifications that were provided by our design team. This gives us the ability to be able to shift things ever so slightly to make sure that they're perfectly centered within the space and give us just enough room to make sure that the design aesthetic is on point and provide for any variances that might have come up in the architectural plan set 
which typically is less than a half an inch to an inch. For those of you that have either built custom or been involved with building, we understand how critical it is to have a solid foundation in which to build your home. But in all reality, one of the most critical components is gonna be the underground plumbing, especially here in Arizona, when all this takes place underneath the slab. The likelihood of a structural issue in the future as it relates to the placement of concrete, meaning the footing, stem, and slab, is highly unlikely. It'd be more likely that your clients would point out a plumbing issue as it would result in either water damage or in this case, a stench that just simply could not be ignored. In addition, it's this component that could actually create a fair amount of additional work if it's not planned out correctly and each individual fixture and drain line isn't placed appropriately based on the accurate measurements that are given and compiled during design. So we covered a lot of the nuances of underground plumbing and some of the things that we do ahead of time in anticipation of making sure that everything goes smoothly while here on site. So how exactly do we ensure that our underground plumbing lines are working appropriately before backfilling and getting ready for slab pour? The first thing that our inspector is gonna look for is to determine that all of our plumbing lines are holding water under pressure, or at least static pressure, as indicated by this large plumbing stack located here at the end of the line. Now you might not be able to see the water come out the top because I've already had our on-site construction manager come out here and double check to make sure that it was topped off appropriately. But the inspector's basically checking to see if there's any leaks within the system by inspecting this specific line that runs about eight feet in the air to make sure that it's holding water, which ensures that the sewer system, which is technically a passive gravity centric drainage, it's for this purpose that we don't have to truly pressure wise any of our drain lines, but we do want to ensure that before they're buried that no leaks are occurring within the system. In preparation and in previous videos, we just missed Ryan, our on-site construction manager, who was able to place everything out appropriately so that our inspector can easily find specific items that he's looking for in this critical inspection. So once we pass inspection today, which should be no problem, given the preparation that went in, the next step will be for us to complete the dirt backfill and ensure that no bellies are created within the plumbing runs that we just walked through today. But once this last step occurs, we'll be able to turn it back over to our concrete company to take care of AB compaction and start preparing for slab work. Stay tuned for that video in a couple weeks. Thanks for following along. DM us or reach out via our website if you have any interest in building with us here in Phoenix and have a great day.